Hi everybody, so I did promise to do something on tank circuits and tank circuits were really just a coil and a capacitor although deceptively simple to construct are actually quite complicated in the way they behave and what they can be used for is astonishing and they consist as I say of only an inductor and a capacitor so they're frequently referred to as LC circuits. Capacitors store energy in the form of an electric field. That electric field is stored energy as a potential or a static voltage. Inductors store energy in the form of a magnetic field and that can be seen as a kinetic motion of electrons or a current. So if you like, capacitors and inductors are flip sides of the same reactive coin, storing and releasing energy in complementary modes. When these two types of reactive components are directly connected together, their complementary tendencies to store energy will produce an unusual and interesting result. If either the capacitor or the inductor starts out in a charged state, the two components will exchange energy between them back and forth, creating their own AC voltage and current cycles. If we assume that both components are subject to a sudden application of voltage, say from connecting to a battery, the capacitor will very quickly charge and the inductor will oppose change in current, leaving the capacitor in a charged state and the inductor in a discharged state. The capacitor will begin to discharge, its voltage decreasing. Meanwhile, the inductor will begin to build up a charge in the form of a magnetic field as current increases in the circuit. The inductor, still charging, will keep electrons flowing in the circuit until the capacitor has completely discharged, leaving a zero voltage across it. The inductor will maintain current flow, even with no voltage applied. In fact, it will generate voltage, a bit like a battery, in order to keep the current in the same direction. The capacitor, being the recipient of this current, will begin to accumulate a charge in the opposite polarity as before. When the inductor is finally depleted of its energy reserve and the electrons come to a halt, the capacitor will have reached full charge or voltage in the opposite polarity as when it started. Now we're at a condition very similar to where we started, the capacitor at full charge and zero current in the circuit. The capacitor as before will begin to discharge through the inductor causing an increase in current in the opposite direction as before and a decrease in voltage as it depletes its own energy reserve. Eventually the capacitor will discharge to zero volts leaving the inductor fully charged with a full current through it. The inductor, desiring to maintain current in the same direction, will act like a source again, generating a voltage like a battery to continue the flow. In doing so, the capacitor will begin to charge up and the current will decrease in magnitude. Eventually, the capacitor will become fully charged again as the inductor expends all of its energy reserves trying to maintain current. The voltage will once again be at its positive peak and the current at zero, and this completes one full cycle of the energy exchange between the capacitor and the inductor. This oscillation will continue with steady decreasing amplitude due to the power losses from the stray resistances in the circuit until the process stops altogether. Overall, this behaviour is very similar to a pendulum. As the pendulum mass swings backwards and forwards, there is a transformation of energy taking place from kinetic or motion to potential or the height the mass reaches, in a similar fashion to the way energy is transferred in the capacitor inductor circuit back and forth in alternating forms of current, kinetic motion of electrons, and voltage, potential electric energy. At the peak height of each swing of a pendulum, the mass briefly stops and switches directions. It's at this point that potential energy, height, is at a maximum and kinetic energy, motion, is at zero. As the mass swings back the other way, it passes quickly through a point where the string is pointed straight down. And at this point, the potential energy, height, is at zero and the kinetic energy, motion, is at maximum. Like the circuit, a pendulum's back and forth oscillation will continue with a steadily dampened amplitude from the result of air friction dissipating energy. Also like the circuit, the pendulum's position and velocity measure two sine waves 90 degrees out of phase over time. In physics, this kind of natural sine wave oscillation for a mechanical system is called simple harmonic motion, often abbreviated as SHM. The same underlying principle governs both the oscillation of a capacitor inductor circuit and the action of a pendulum, hence the similar effect. 
It is an interesting property of any pendulum that its periodic time is governed by the length of the string holding the mass and not the weight of the mass itself. This is why a pendulum will keep swinging at the same frequency as the oscillations decrease in amplitude. The oscillation rate is independent of the amount of energy stored in it. The same is true for the capacitor inductor circuit. The rate of oscillation is strictly dependent on the size of the capacitor and inductor, not on the amount of voltage or current at each respective peak in the waves. The ability for such a circuit to store energy in the form of oscillating voltage and current has earned it the name tank circuit. Property of maintaining a single natural frequency, regardless of how much or how little energy is actually being stored in it, gives it special significance in electric circuit design. This might seem a bit of a useless curiosity, however it's not the case. That resonance is a very valuable property and it's employed in a variety of applications. One use is to establish a condition of stable frequency in circuits designed to produce AC signals. Just as a pendulum can be used to stabilise the frequency of your clock's mechanism, a tank circuit oscillation can be used to stabilise the electrical frequency of an AC oscillator circuit. Another use of resonance is in applications where the effects of greatly increased or decreased impedance at a particular frequency is desired. A resonance circuit can be used to block or present high impedance towards a frequency or a range of frequencies and then it acts as a sort of filter to strain certain frequencies out of the mix of others. This is the basic principle that a radio receiver works on. So to my mind a surprising circuit with a huge range of applications. Tesla was infamous for them of course with his bifilar coils and his high voltage generator. But I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.